In this lesson, we're going to learn some more about using text in InDesign. We'll look at text formatting. We'll look at letting. That's the space between the lines. We'll also look at how much contrast you need with the text and the background so that you can make it readable. And we'll do some fun things like text on a path and wrapping text around other shapes. Remember to download and unzip your lesson files that are linked above this video. We'll start with a simple exercise where we place text on top of a picture, and then we'll adjust the size and position of the text so that it fits nicely with other elements in the picture. Then start in design. Click Create New. In the New Document box, you'll see the default page is letter-sized, but it says 51p0 by 66p0. Those are pikas, and if we look on the right-hand side of the page in the Units menu, we see pikas is picked. If we switch to inches, it's actually eight and a half by 11 inches. You can use either inches or picas in InDesign. Uh, most designers work with inches, but it's fine either way. So for this new document, we're going to make a different page size. We'll just type it in here. We're gonna type in eight inches for the width and eight inches for the height, and then click Create. In the last module, we saw that you could place a picture and it would automatically make a frame for it. You can also make the frame first and then place the picture into it. You'll click the rectangle frame tool and we're gonna draw a frame that's exactly the size of the page. Then we'll go to the file menu, click place, and we're going to choose 01guitar.jpg. Click open and the guitar picture fills the frame that we just drew. The guitar picture is actually larger than the frame. If we zoom out a little bit and get our selection tool, click on our contact grabber, you can see the guitar picture extends outside of all edges of this frame. And we're going to grab the content. We're going to click the content grabber and slide our picture over so that it's all the way pushed towards the right. You can move it up and down as well, but it's fine where it is. And now we're going to add some text. We'll also place that. So we're going to use File, Place, and we're going to select the O1Guitar.doc. The text seems to have replaced the picture because whenever you use Place, whatever you pick goes into the current selection. Because we had selected the guitar to move it around, it's selected and the text will replace it. We don't want that, so we're going to go to Edit and Undo. Right. When we move around with our cursor, we can see that the text thumbnail is there. So if we click it outside of the page, our text box will show up on top of our picture. Our text box is a lot bigger than our text, so we'll grab a corner and make it smaller. Move it over onto the picture. And we're going to make the text bigger. If we look at our character settings in our properties panel, the text right now is 12 point. We're gonna make it 20. And then we're going to rotate the box so that it lines up with the angle of the guitar. So click by the corner, get the rotate tool and rotate it about there. And you can make some adjustments, move it down a little. And you have a nice composition where your line of text is repeating the angle or the rotation of the line of guitar. This looks good, except I don't like the purple and pink margin line or the blue box around the text. So let's go to the view menu, go to grids and guides, and select hide guides. That gets rid of our purple and pink margin line. And go back to the view menu, go to extras and select hide frame edges. And that gets rid of the box around the text. So now we have a very nice looking layout, a little design composition with some text and an image. In the next section, we'll look at how to adjust letting. Letting is the space between lines of text and it's called letting because back when people printed with metal type, like actual pieces of metal that had letter shapes on it, and they put ink and press it on the paper, they would put bars of lead 
between the lines to space them apart. So although we do everything digitally now, the word letting is still there to mean the space between the lines. We're going to make another new document for the text and picture and do some more text formatting. So go to InDesign and create new. We're going to select print and then pick letter and I want to turn it horizontal so under orientation I'm going to click landscape and then click create. Now this time I'm just going to place the picture directly without drawing the box. So go File, Place, and select 02 coastjpg You'll see the thumbnail of the picture. I want to cover the whole page. I'm going to put it in the upper left-hand corner and click there. You'll see that the picture is slightly larger than the page. It extends off the right-hand side, but that's fine. The part that we can see on the page is perfect. I'm going to click in the workspace around the picture so I can deselect it. And then I'm going to go back to the file menu and we're going to click place, pick the text, which is 02coast.doc and click open. You'll get a message about the missing font. This is fine because we're going to replace the font anyway. Click close, take your text thumbnail and click it in the upper left hand corner. Okay, the text is highlighted in pink because the font's missing. Okay, but we will fix that by choosing a new font. But first we're going to resize the text box by grabbing the right hand edge and making it a lot narrower. And now go to your character panel in your properties, open the font and we will choose Arial Bold, and then we're going to make the font size bigger, make it 18, and the number next to the font size is the line spacing, or we call letting in graphic design. And we're going to make that 30. It puts a lot more space between the lines. It makes it easier to read as well as easier to see the background. And now we're going to change the color of the text. So we'll use the eyedropper tool again. So remember to, to finger tap or command or control click on your color theme tool. Switch to your eyedropper tool if it's not there already. Remember to pick the T below the color swatches. And then we'll click on a bright white color in our picture. And it makes our text fix some things here. So we can read the text really well, except for the word resorts, which is on top of the building. So we'll switch to the text cursor, click right before the R in resorts and press return. Now we can have the text only over the water where it's easier to read. Everything looks good, but again, I want to get rid of these purple and blue lines around everything. So to get rid of the purple pink margin line, we go to view, grids and guides, hide guides. And then to get rid of the text and the picture boxes, we will go to the view menu again, extras, and then hide frame edges. In the last picture, we were lucky that there was a background behind the text that made it easy for the text to be read. In this part of the lesson, we'll look at how to change the contrast so that it's easier to read when you have text on top of pictures. Often pictures have a lot of colors and a lot of light and dark, and it's hard to read letters when it's on top. So we can adjust the contrast of the picture by feathering it to make the text easier to read. Open your InDesign and click Create New. And we're going to make a postcard, a vertical postcard. We're going to make a vertical postcard size document that's four inches wide and six inches tall. And then click create. Okay, we're going to draw the picture frame first. So click your frame tool and draw a picture frame that's the same size as your page. 
and then go to the file menu, choose place. We're going to use 03wedding.jpg. Click open. So this picture is a lot bigger than the frame. We're going to slide it over so that we can see the dancing couple at the wedding. And then click in the area around it to deselect it. Go back to the file menu. We'll choose place. And we're going to pick the 03wedding.doc text. And we'll click that on top of the picture like this. Right, as you can see, it's hard to read the text on top of this photograph uh, because there's contrast issues where the text is almost the same color as the things in the background and the letters disappear. And we can adjust the background by picking it going to the object menu, point to effects, and we'll choose gradient feather. Right, the first thing you want to do is click the preview button. And this shows you what the gradient feather looks like. So your photograph now is fading away towards the right hand side. Um, this helps the contrast for the text a lot, but it also kind of washes out the photograph. So we want to keep the richness of the photograph and still have a light background on the other side. We'll take the black color swatch and slide it across on the gradient slider. And that gives us more of our rich sepia color depth on the left and still keeps it fairly light on the right. Okay, but now it's getting a little harder to read on the right. So we're going to make another adjustment. We're gonna grab this little thing in the middle of the white and black areas and slide it closer to black so that we get something where the text is really easy to read on that background but we still see the photograph quite well then we click okay and now we're going to take the text box and make it narrower and slide it down a little bit and we're going to pick a font. I'm going to pick a font called Gloucester, which is really narrow. Okay, you may not have this font, but just pick any font that's narrow so that the letter, the words fit nicely in the box. And then I'm going to change the alignment, which is in the paragraph part of the properties panel to be align right. I'm going to move the text box over a little bit and then I'm going to change this the letting of the words so that's the one next to the size and I'm going to make that 24 spread them out and then I'm going to make the point size of the font 18. Okay, I don't quite have all the words in there, so I need to make some adjustments on the size of the box. Okay, you can tell there's words missing by the little red plus sign at the bottom of the text box. So when you get the box big enough, the red plus sign disappears. Okay, so now I have a nice composition of my words on top of my photograph. I can read the words really well. I can still see the photograph quite well. I just want to finish up by getting rid of the guidelines. So we go to view, grids and guides, hide guides, and then view, extras, hide frame edges. And now we have a very beautiful postcard. In this part of the lesson, we'll look at how to put text on lines. Since we can draw lines in any shapes, we can make the text follow the line. So in our example, we will make the text go around a circle, but you can make it go around any line. So we'll open in design. We're going to use a standard letter size, but we'll go with the horizontal or landscape orientation again and click create. Go to the file menu and we'll choose place. We're going to choose the 04 stirring.jpg and then click open. 
Click the thumbnail in the upper left hand corner. You can see the picture. It doesn't quite fill the page, but for our purposes, it will be fine. Now we're going to deselect this and then we're going to select, well, we're going to two finger tap on our rectangle tool or control or command tap on it and select the ellipse. Press shift and option or shift and alt. Put your cursor in the middle of the white area and draw a circle. And then deselect the circle. Go to the file menu, select place, and we're going to use the 04 mixing dot doc. Okay, if we click our text thumbnail on our circle, we see the text inside the circle. This isn't what we want, so we're going to switch to our and click four times on our text to select it all. Go to the edit menu and she's cut. Okay, now we'll go back to our text tool and we will two finger tap or command or control click on it and choose the type on a path tool. Click our, path, our tool somewhere on the edge of our circle. Now you can see the type cursor is now kind of sticking out of the circle. And go to the edit menu and click paste. Now our text is sitting nicely on the edge of our circle. Select all the text and press shift command or shift control and period to make the text larger. We're gonna change the font style to bold. The font is Arial. So just open the style menu in the character part of the properties panel and click bold. We're gonna rotate the circle around so the text is more on top. So just go by one of the handles of the circle and turn it. and then move it in a little bit so it's more centered. Go to the view menu and hide the guides. Go to the view menu and hide the frame edges. But we still see the black line of the circle. So we wanna get rid of that by picking the circle. And then we'll go to the colors at the bottom of the tool panel, click on a stroke color to bring it forward. It's black, that's why we see a black circle. And then to finger tap or command or control click on the color box below and choose none. Okay. Now you can see your text on the circle, but not the circle. In the last part of this lesson, We'll do text wrap. Text wrap is when you make a paragraph wrap around the shape of an object. We'll do a nice little design where we have some text wrapping around the shape of a coffee cup. But you can wrap around anything. And it's a really nice technique for combining text and images into creative designs. So let's create a new document. This one's going to be a horizontal postcard. So it'll be six inches by four inches and we click the landscape or horizontal orientation. We go to the file menu and choose place. We're going to use 05coffee.jpg and click it in the upper left corner. I'm going to hide the guides now so they don't distract me while I'm working on this. So go to view and hide guides. Deselect the picture and then get the pen tool in your toolbox. And we're going to draw a curve that follows the edge of the coffee cup. And so you click a point, click again and drag to make it a curve. 
curve again. Let's go down here and make it a curve. And we click one more time at the bottom. I have a, a simple outline of a coffee cup shape. And now I'm going to go back to my file menu, pick place, and you're going to choose 05coffee.doc. And we'll just click it. Yeah, so it sort of overlaps the cup. Okay, so the text box is kind of wide. The first thing I'll do is make it narrower so that it sits on the page. Okay, get the selection tool and click on the line and choose the text wrap setting for wrap around object shape. Okay, this pushes the text over so it lines up along the line that I drew. Okay, now we're going to select the text and make it larger. So you can use command or control shift and period. There's three times. And then click the eyedropper, select the T, and then click a color from the coffee or the coffee cup. Now we can turn off the frame edges, hide the frame edges, so we don't see those. Okay, but we still have the black line, and we know how to get rid of that the same way as we did with the last tutorial. So we pick the line, we make sure the stroke color is in front, two finger tap or command or control click on the color box and pick none. You can continue to adjust things by choosing the line and the direct selection tool. And then you can go in and move the points, the segments, or the handles. So the handles are these lines that come out of the point. So you can adjust those to make your text closer or your curve better until you have something you like. Text wrap is very useful because it allows you to create relationships between your pictures and your text.